We're here, Vision 2023, sponsored by Napa Auto Care. Thank you, Jason and the team. I'm in the studio with Carolyn Cocolette, CEO of Shopware, and I had to drag her into the studio. Not only did we do Never. another episode Never. with... Never. Yeah. I, I, we did this episode on the brand change from Luscious Garage to Earthling, and please listen to that. But I also found out that she's releasing an app called Tech App by Shopware. Shopware is releasing an application, a mobile application native to your phone, built just for technicians. I love it. I do too. I don't know anything about it. So I'm going to sit back and enjoy you telling us about this app and it's, it's integrated how it works. I mean, can, can I talk to it? it, it is, is it all knowing, all seeing? And it, obviously it's integrated, right? It, it is. Well, it's very integrated with Shopware. Yeah. Um, so when you create software, software is very expensive. And so you end up having to build products that are kind of as extensible as possible. Right. What does that mean? Extensible? Like they extend to as many oh, things I see. as I see. possible. Okay. And for uh, Shopware also has a reputation for being very flexible. And so you can, you can apply it to all different workflows and types of shops and so forth. So that's all um, appropriate and for the best. But, you know, we have had a, an application that was sort of shared that some of the workflows were shared by customers and staff members and technicians. And so right now technicians are, are doing their work and, and documenting their, their, their findings on our web app. So you are opening Shopware in a browser. All cloud applications that, that you're familiar with are, are the same way. But that means that it's not necessarily customized just for what technicians need. And of course, we're very passionate about the stuff that specifically technicians need. We care a lot about this business and we care a lot about the professionals that are doing it. As a result, I, I believe that we are, we are providing software that is better at understanding your needs and meeting your needs. And so specifically for the technician, which remarkably is the majority of our users, right? We wanted to build something that was going to be really fantastic for them and make the opportunity if we're going to, if we're going to put the investment in to do it right. And so that is tech app by shopware. It is a mobile application, so it lives native. You'll download it from Google Play or the App Store. On iPhone, it works on both platforms, and it's built by mobile industry professionals. We have been able, thankfully, to hire some really top talent to build a professional-grade platform that will allow technicians to fix cars faster. So you will be able to review the jobs that are assigned to you, you can see various and sundry top level of information about those those cars, be able to identify them and, and pull them into your bay. You can see the services that are assigned to you on those uh, repair orders. You can see how many build hours are on those services. You can see how much time you took on those services compared to the build hours. You can look at individual services, clock in, see a live clock of your time as it's running on that service, and then review the activities that need to be done, labor operations, parts, parts status, as well as inspections. And this is an area that we're particularly passionate about. Shopper has a lot of flexibility in terms of how it manages inspections. You can put an inspection on any kind of service. And this is finally optimizing the way the technicians are filling out those inspections. So we will be using natural sort of mobile uh, behaviors like swiping to be able to fill out that checklist lightning fast you're swiping right to check green, you're swiping left to, to check yellow or red. And if you check yellow or red, you're instantly placed at an entry form where you can talk to text or put your notes in, access your camera, attach stuff that you might have already taken or videos, etc. So instantly get media on that ticket and then move on to the next, the next item. So the, the interface, the way that you're going to be able to both understand what your work is, but also communicate your findings and the results of your work through this interface are, I think, going to really delight you as a as a professional, and you'll feel like this was designed for you because it was. It's exciting. It's a management tool. Is it a diagnostics tool? So currently, I mean, Shopper currently integrates with, with different diagnostic platforms, and we're integrated with service information. We have quick specs. We have other kinds of stuff that technicians can use for reference. 
But right now, this tool is largely for entering your findings and, and time clocks. So both check clocking in at the beginning of your day, clocking out, uh, and also then clocking into individual services. So it's narrowed onto the stuff that the technicians are doing when they're on the car. That's step one. We have lots of additional stuff that's happening um, after this initial release. So it's the responsibility. The, the app, Tech App by Shopware, literally takes the software into the hand. Mm -hmm. And the, the job of the process of the technician to do his inspection and to follow up and follow through. It's almost like if you were do if you were paying flat rate, the, the analysis is, is there in the hand. I mean, you could, sure. he's on or he's off. I mean, is there a clock in and clock out? Correct. Thing on it? Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and it's integrated into your flow looking at the service, right? So it's much easier for you to remember to clock that time and to clock in when you are actually starting your work and just I increasing visibility, not only for sort of tracking your efficiencies and so on and so forth, but when you're actually working on the car, knowing how far you're in and whether you're getting close, do you need to stop and go have the uh, service advisor sell some more time for that diagnostic or do you need to pick up your pace and get this job done? So if, if I had the laptop at my toolbox, you're basically taking that and putting it in my hand at the vehicle. Yeah, so there's certain workflows that are best done on a large screen, like looking up wiring diagrams, for example, or wanting to review lots of service details or read a bunch of notes. So there's there's different workflow tools that are still you know, on our web app and that you would use the browser to manage on any device, including a workstation. The stuff that's currently being built in Tech App, and again, this is just, you know, version one, is the work that you do when you're on the car. So documentation, reviewing the work that you need to be done, clocking in and out of services. Um, and that's ultimately where technicians have their speed, right? So technicians don't get paid to move clipboards. Technicians don't get paid to go find keys. Technicians don't get paid to even necessarily take photos or document their details. It's certainly in your best interest to do so. You get paid to fix cars. And so the idea is to minimize the administrative burden that is required for you to fix cars. And that's what this app is doing. You know what it sounds to me like we've done episodes on lean and mm -hmm. saving steps. That's right. Yeah. So understanding that a lot of technicians using Shopper today already use their phones to document repairs. They're just doing it through a browser app instead of a native app. So the idea here is that this app is allowing you to operate without the limitations of what is not possible inside of a browser. So there's more you can do with the app. Absolutely. Got it. And it's native in the way that it's going to access your camera. It's going to track your location. It'll be able to clock in and out for, for shifts and stuff like that. So visibility. There's other kinds of things that this is able to do for you that a browser just doesn't unlock. I figured it out now. The reason that you write the app for the phone is it's, if I think you said the word native, mm -hmm. to the power that the phone has, mm -hmm. not the web browser mm -hmm. that needs to what send stuff back and forth, formatting yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's just not as integrated. It's just harder to use, you know, the number of clicks, the ability to like turn on the flash for your camera to zoom in and out. We're definitely looking at other kinds of things like voice commands. And you, you talked about, can I talk to it? You know, you can talk to text, but you're not commanding, hey, shopware, take a photo. But we're absolutely going to go there. And this is, you know, again, using the native microphone, other kinds of behaviors. We don't currently have push notifications, but certainly there's opportunity to build in push notifications and so forth. So, you know, that we use phones. We all know what the phones are capable of. A lot of applications have moved away from native. And in, in a lot of ways, there's been experimentation with, for example, having native applications for customers. And it's, it's, un, it's unfortunate, but customers tend to kind of ignore the fact that they're responsible for their cars and don't really want to think about it yeah, until yeah. it's you know, <laughs> the lights on. So it, it's not necessarily appropriate to expect your customers to download your app. However, your technicians want to use the native environment because they want to have all of those benefits and they're using it, by the way, yeah. all day, every day. Yeah. Hey, it's no secret. We're facing a technician shortage and Napa Auto Care has a solution with the Napa Auto Care Apprentice Program. The program was pioneered by one of our own. Pete McNeil and Master Technician Jake Sorensen from McNeil's Auto Care in Sandy, Utah, realized that the problem of not having technicians available for hire was not going to solve itself and decided to take action and look at a different audience of individuals available for hire. A focus was put on younger individuals with the right passion, desire, and attitude to work in the automotive repair industry. 
Jake and Pete sought after these individuals and developed a technician apprentice program to give them the training needed to become a successful technician in today's world. The NAPA Auto Care Apprentice Program includes a comprehensive nine-stage curriculum that includes a variety of types of training, and they are classroom training videos exclusive to the apprentice program. Now, these videos provide in-depth training from a successful master technician. Also, Autotech classes with instructor-led courses offered through NAPA Autotech and Autotech eLearning. This web-based eLearning is designed to target specific training topics. And finally, hands-on learning. The apprentice will apply the skills gained from the classroom training videos, Autotech instructor-led training, and Autotech eLearnings in the shop with the guidance of a mentor. The apprentice program curriculum is competency-based, meaning an apprentice can move through each stage at a pace that best suits them. Most apprentices complete the program within two years. Upon completion, apprentices will have earned ASE G1, A4, A5, and AC certifications, adding industry validation to the skills an apprentice acquires. Look, having an apprentice in your shop will ultimately benefit your bottom line as they advance through the program. And in most cases, as the apprentice develops their skill set producing billable hours, you'll begin to see a growth in your gross profit by stage five. One of the largest barriers to entry for individuals looking to enter the automotive repair industry is the cost of tools. Now, keep your apprentice motivated with an apprentice toolkit. Now, Napa Auto Care has worked with our supplying partners to offer an exclusive comprehensive tool set, including a four-drawer tool card for all registered apprentices. Hey, to learn more, members can visit member.napaautocare.com. So, so here I am in my, my company, and we're, we're growing, and, and things are great. I was trying to do a role play that I'm a shop owner. So here I have, a, I have a shop. It's growing. It's great. And I need to hire somebody just to keep up with stuff. Sure. How do I really know and how efficient am I and our people are? And as I'm, I'm thinking the whole app thing about the improvement of efficiency. Yes, of course. The technician's efficiency and the workflow inside the and the information that comes up at the front counter probably instantly as the stuff is being done in the bays. Yeah. So this- there, okay, here's how it goes. There's efficiency. Sure. Everyone wants to be efficient. Really, that's about money and that I want to make more money. I don't want to waste time. So that's the money that's in my pocket. That's the number of build hours that I'm getting potentially flagged for, you know, in my paycheck at the end of the week. But money isn't the source of happiness. Happiness is the source of happiness. And ultimately, your technicians wanting to come work at your shop, feel like they are respected, that their time is respected. Yes, you want to be profitable. Yes, they want to be profitable and have a livelihood. But ultimately, we're talking about how do we get these people to want to come work in our businesses and stay there. And when you're able to put tools in their hands that make their jobs easier and more delightful and more nurturing and you know make and respect their professionalism, that obviously makes them want to work for you versus pounding their head against the wall. Going to be tied to DVX. It's totally tied to DVX. Totally for tied. Sure. The customer's experience. Yeah. So what the technician's capturing is is ultimately service to the customer. Um, and in this case, it's allowing a shopper to um, attach those those findings directly within the inspection items and show them in a way that's stitched together. Um, and that's what traditional DVIs have done for a long time, but they lack the, the richness that shoppers, repair orders, and the customer share experiences, including diagnostic details after the job is finished and showing the repair, being able to pay in that environment, those kinds of immersive benefits of DVX, stitching those with the, the sort of uh, inspection flows. And, and noting that also DVIs are traditionally one size fits all. It's a courtesy check. You're not using inspections for diagnostics. You're not doing inspections for or using DVIs for part of your normal repair services, quality control, stuff like that. This is going to use work universally. So anything that the technician needs to communicate at any stage of the repair will be powered by this app and make that make that work easier and obviously high value because that's the stuff that you want to show off to your customers. So where do you come up with these ideas? That's thoughtful of you. I, I mean, I think that this is something that we've known we've needed to do for a long time. And again, it's it's part of the maturity of, of building a software product. You know, shop owners are arrogant bastards because only arrogant bastards think they can fix cars and make money doing it. I can say that because I'm one of them. <laughs> but we also have very strong opinions about our software. And we've been running programs that have been built decades ago. So we we want everything in the kitchen sink. 
unfortunately, and any of the other software companies listening to this certainly can appreciate that actually building those gigantic platforms, which is what shop management software is, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money, takes a lot of engineering. And so in order for us to be able to deliver innovation to the space, you, you can't do it all at once. You have to do it one step at a time and you have to have rigorous prioritization to know what's the most important thing to deliver to your customers to be able to grow your business, grow our software business in this case. For us, you know, we haven't been able to do this yet. And we're finally getting there and we've got the team. We've got, again, like, you know, people who have done mobile for SAP, for Workday, for other, like one of the things you'll, you'll find this interesting. So my head of engineering, and my head of product, both have mobile experience. And in the uh, Workday example, you know, Workday is an ERP system that ended up kind of eating, eating SAP. So a disruptor to SAP, SAP. And, you know, Workday is, uh, it has a clock in, clock out function, just like Shopware's tech app does. And they were talking about how it's unforeseen, but what that application essentially is doing is allowing thousands of people to click clock in at the same exact time. And how do you build a you know, database and a tech stack that can handle all of those requests all at the exact same time? And they know this because they did it before. You have to build an app that's going to be able to work when thousands of people all on the East Coast all click clock in at 8 a.m., right? And I was like, wow, this is a great example of something that I would never have thought of. But because you've been there and you've, you've got sort of the scars to prove it, we can fold all of that learning into the thing that we're building. And we've actually we had a user group yesterday here at the Vision event to be able to bring our customers together, show them some of this stuff, get their feedback. And, you know, we, we have a prototype that we're showing at our booth and so forth and getting people to really touch it and feel it. We've been interviewing a bunch of our customers and their technicians and so on to be able to validate what we're building. I mean, this is this is the real thing. And I think when people use it, when it's in their hands and they use it, they're going to be able to tell. Two comments. Number one, the most powerful word I heard in the last three minutes was engineering. Hmm. And I don't know if we, as users of software, no matter what we do we on our know. phone, we don't have a clue the power of engineering. Wait a minute. You're not building a building? Wait, you're not building a widget? No, it's software. I just think it's, it's a word that everyone, I think, needs to stop and let sink in engineering. Well, we're great at consuming new technology, right? Like I love that Louis CK skit where he's talking about, you know, you just got this thing and you're judging it. And he's like, give it a minute. It's going to space. <laughs> you know, it's just so true. We're just so like enabled and, and, you know, we use this free software all the time. Facebook, there's this Buzz Aldrin quote, from when he was interviewed in the MIT magazine where he said, you promised me Mars colonies, you gave me Facebook. <laughs> you know, like our best minds are, are working on social networks. So anyway, we totally take for granted the, the work that goes into this. In the same way that drivers of cars take for granted the work that goes into making those magic carpets fly around. And in the same way, when we're the driver, it's really hard to appreciate how hard it is to fix it. And when we're users of software, it's hard to appreciate how hard it is to build it. Just like it is to build a car, too. I mean, we give manufacturers of cars a hard time, but I'm grateful I'm not having to build them. And so the next thing off the top of my head is the, is the word, when I think of engineering and I think of all the, the stuff that you get input, we'd like to do it this, will the software do that? Well, what about this switch? How many requests do you get? Yeah, we get, we get a lot. I mean, I think, again... Shop owners and, and users, even all staff members inside of the business, doesn't matter if you're a technician, you're a service advisor, whatever, smart people are in this business. And we certainly appeal to smart operators. I mean, that's where Shopware's kind of, that's our base is sort of like the nerdiest people in this business. I like that. Um, and so they have a lot of opinions. And those opinions are not just kind of, oh, I, you know, woke up today and I decided that this should happen. It's like, it's, it's based on your experience using this thing in the work environment. I respect that feedback very much. You're paying me to use my software and you're giving me feedback. Like, thank you very much. So yeah, we, we do a lot of folding of that feedback into our product roadmap and certainly ranking in terms of prioritization. What's the most important? Again, that's the reason why we built DBX and that's the reason why we we're building this tech app. 
based on people's feedback, and, and we'll continue to do that. And uh, we also run an NPS survey once a year, sometimes twice a year, but more recently it's been about once a year, and then read all of those responses. We actually post all of the responses internally on our on our shop or Slack channel, and every single employee is expected to read those responses. So we we listen, um, and certainly we are we are building an ever greater engineering team to be able to deliver the things that you need, and not just listening but responding. I want to I want to reply to your workday SAP story. Mm -hmm. I worked for a company that had SAP, and it was a very difficult conversion to go from what we had exactly. to, to SAP. Yes. Very, very difficult. And when I think of the word relevancy, mm. to stay and be relevant as a shop owner, as a software provider, sure. that you can't let someone who's got a different, better idea, market, whatever, take over what you've built. And apparently SAP isn't as relevant as they used to be because someone had a better mousetrap. Yeah. And it's, we're not here talking about software as much as we're talking about imaging, culture, and marketing, and, and all that stuff that goes into running a great business. You've got to continue to always be relevant, and someone may take away your relevancy. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about culture, right? Yeah. And, and are you listening, are you adapting, or are you kind of resting on your laurels? And certainly when we look at the software space, even in automotive, we see that writ large. You know, there's a lot of dinosaurs that have started to fall, frankly. I mean, there's a there's a real shift going on inside of this business right now. And um, by God, it's a critical one because we need to be a lot more efficient and a lot more connected to be able to fix tomorrow's cars. Okay. Some rumors. You ready for these rumors? Can't wait. <sighs> Functions for fleet inside of shop. Yes. I heard that. Yes. We've added quite a lot of that. We have a couple more things, fleet rate, labor rates, discounts, other kinds of stuff. But we've added accounts receivable management, contact information, PO tracking, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and we're not we're talking about your own shop's POs. We're talking about the fleet's PO so that you you never get the, well, I can't pay that. There's no PO number on it. And you can actually enter the PO number. It shows up on the R. It shows up on the DVX screen. It's, it's great. So listening again to a lot of experts that do a lot of fleet inside of their businesses and making sure that we're... We're delivering them the things they need. Writing different, smarter code for multi-shop operators? Definitely. We have uh, our existing MSO platform, which is, I think, our secret sauce, one of our one of our crown jewels for sure, shared customer history, analytics for the big boys. But additionally, we are building out a platform. Like I was saying, we have dedicated, we have had shared kind of extensible products in the past. We are now building things for purpose. So it will be, be kind of, not tech app, but it will be a web app platform just for enterprise, just for folks with multiple locations to manage their can jobs, to manage consistent pricing, user provisioning, inventory control, lots of kind of stuff that is normally quite painful to manage shop by shop. You can finally, you can all manage all in one place. I love it. Build for purpose. Build for purpose. It is, it is a strong strategy to have in any business. Build your team for purpose. Build. I just, I, I love it. Well, you know, specialization, again, it takes time. You have to build a team yeah. to build specialization. So, yeah. I, I learned a lot. Thank you, Carm. Thank I always you. enjoy Carolyn, being Carolyn with you. Carolyn Coquillette, CEO of sh shop, just, the shopware. And, so uh, valuable to us. Woo. Are you kidding me? I, I took too many notes. I don't know. Can, can I get shopware and can I get that app? And, uh, and, and sure I, then I think I'm going to start a shop. <laughs> It's only a matter of time. I mean, I can't believe you've managed to stave this off for this long. No kidding. Well, I'm, or start I'm, a manufacturing company or, or, or yeah, a uh, warehouse distributor. I yeah, mean, God. surely yeah. maybe that's the problem is that there's so many options in this business. Yeah. What do I do next? I keep doing podcasting. Yay. Yay. Good to see you, man. Nice to see you too.